Welcome back to the QP Buckeye Insider from South Florida, joined now by Jim Novo from the Lyman News. And Jim, you've certainly covered plenty of Ohio State bowl games. It doesn't seem like you can ever have a Buckeye bowl game without a little drama. Yeah, you've got uh, you know two missing players, key players. You've got uh, Noah Spence out for some sort of uh, reportedly dietary supplement uh, that wasn't on the approved list. And now Bradley Roby, the best defensive back, uh, not going to play. You know, we heard from Coach Meyer earlier today, and certainly there's a lot of troubles with the defense. You take away your best cornerback and your best pass rusher, it sounds like that could be a recipe for even more issues. Yet Urban didn't seem all that uh, concerned about his defense. He seems to think that they've fixed some problems through this bowl practice. Well, I mean, what's what's a coach going to say? You know, <laughs> it's wide open. Go ahead, <laughs> throw out as much as you want. But, yeah, I thought it was interesting yesterday that uh, Chris Carter said that, you know, the big receiver for – Clemson is, if he's not the number one pick in the NFL draft, he's the number two pick. So, you know, this, this is going to be interesting, I think. The Ohio State offense has been explosive all season long. They were held in check a little bit by Michigan State, but following the Spartans' Rose Bowl victory last night, maybe that offense doesn't look quite as bad against Michigan State now. Yeah, I mean, Michigan State, the more I saw them, the more I was impressed. You know, And, uh, yeah, I think that's that might be the key for Ohio State is that if they can score enough points to uh, – you know, make up for a few defensive lapses. You know, we've heard so much about Tom Herman and how an innovative offensive coordinator he is, yet we've certainly seen them rely on the old ground and pound game with that offensive line in Carlos Hyde. Do you think we'll see a more wide open Buckeye attack offensively? You would hope so. I mean, in the last, I think, four games, Braxton Miller's completion percentage is 46%, and what he completed a total of 14 passes in the last two games. So I would think that they were probably look back at that Michigan State game and and think, okay, maybe we try something a little more wide open. This will be the final season for the Bowl Championship Series, and you can argue that no team has had more success in the BCS than Ohio State. But no team's played more BCS games, I think, and yeah, if, if you uh, you know get, you get one more win, they're definitely in one of those championships games. They're definitely the king of the BCS, and yeah, they want to go out with a win here and uh, sort of make it an an annual thing that they go to a BCS game, or, you know, a big game, as it'll be. Urban Meyer had some interesting things to say about the possibility of the, the playoff and how that could impact student-athletes. Just your thoughts on what's going to be the future of college football starting next season with a four-team playoff. I think that is going to be an issue that people haven't looked at. I mean, people make fun of that and say, oh, you know, that's just an excuse. But yeah, it's not basketball, <laughs> you know, especially just in the physical toll that it takes these guys getting beaten up every week. And, you know, like he said, it's the start of a semester. And, you know, you're, you're taking these guys out for maybe a couple of weeks at the start of a semester. So, yeah, that's, that's something that I don't think has been looked at. All right, thank you very much, Jim Navo from the Lima News. Of course, check out Lima News paper as well as Lima.com for the game story. Don Speck, the brilliant photographer for the Lima News, will be down as well, so he'll have plenty of good pictures as well. Now, you mentioned Chris Carter and what he had to say about Sammy Watkins. We did have an opportunity to talk to Chris Carter yesterday, and he's down here to support Urban Meyer. It's an interesting relationship between Chris Carter and Urban Meyer. You go into the Buckeye team meeting room in Columbus, there's a Bible scripture quote and also a quote from Chris Carter. He's in Florida, and that's where he lives, but he's also out here to help support Urban Meyer. He's got the program right where it should be. I'm excited for the kids, especially for the young, uh, for the older guys who really hung in there to give these young kids an opportunity to be at a bowl game like this. So that's always nice. I'm here for Urban, yep. here for the kids. There's a lot, a lot of kids on the roster that I know. Um, I, I'm pretty certain um, they know the magnitude uh, of, of what's going on. You know, so I look for them to put on a good show. You know, it's a, it's a big time bowl game. You know, being Orange Bowl. We haven't played in a whole bunch of Orange Bowls, so I don't think the kids would take it for granted. Sammy Watkins, when you watch him play, you've seen him play. Oh, he's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. If he, if he's not the number one receiver in, in this year's draft, he could be number two, number two receiver. Versatility. They give him the ball on the move, too. Very seldom you ever see him with his back to the line of scrimmage. So they get him. You know, he's a Florida kid, too. So, I mean, he can flat out run with the football. There's guys who are fast, and there's guys fast with the football. And he's really... You know, and Dabo and them do a great job of play calling. Also, number one, opposite him. I mean, they're going to have their hands full with those two wide receivers. That's well, in this game, you really want to try to slow them down. And you want to try to force the quarterback into some tight throws. Because they're going to catch some balls. They're going to make some yardage against uh, the Buckeyes defense. But trying to get turnovers and trying to hold them to field goals. If they're able to do that, that's how you're able to win. Chris, uh, this situation is kind of like what you guys had in 86. You lose to Michigan. 86. I haven't. Texas A&M in the Cotton Bowl, one of your biggest games. Just 
What did you guys gain by by going down there and finishing on a high note? I can't even lie and tell you I remember the mentality. <laughs> like, uh, I just know every bowl game, I always wanted to be the best player on the field. So every bowl game from the Rose Bowl, I had one of my coaches mention that to me as USC was taking the field, that he thought that I could be the best player on the field. So after that, the other two bowl games I played in, that was my only mentality. Get better in the 15, 20 practices you get. And um, I don't think much has changed for these kids. It's a great opportunity. Bowl season is special, especially after what happened to us, what we come through the last couple of years. So um, I think that it, it, it's still a great reward. You know, even though we could have been a national championship game, it's a great reward for how they persevered for the last two years. When we come back, we'll head to Miami and the Buckeye Bash on CUPE Buckeye Insider from South Florida.